okay. This mic is not okay at all. It's not bringing out my clear voice. Amen. Good morning, friends. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Are your families okay? Is everything all right with you? Are you happy? Just lift your hands and say, Holy Spirit, touch me this afternoon, even as I hear your word. Deliver me. Heal me. In Jesus' name. Uh, I want us to just take a minute and speak in the spirit. Let's speak in the spirit. Just activate your spiritual man. Activate the man. Activate the man. Activate the spirit. Every time we speak in tongues, there is immediate spiritual activity immediate spiritual activity begins to take place makasha tarabagara randa labasha tarabazanda rabagara makabo seke brekata rasha tarabazanda rabagara rosha tarabazanda rabagandos marosha tarabazanda rabagandos Makapo seke brekatae. Roshata rabazanda rabagados. Rama shaka bagara. Roshata rabaseke brekatae. Makama saka rabashatae. There's such an awesome presence. Makara bashata rabagarae. Maroshata rabagandos. Makamo saka bragarae. Rosha Taramayanda Rabazanda Makabosa Kaprikato Zabagadai. This is the month of miracles. This is the month of miracles. This is the month of miracles. The Lord told us November is a month of miracles. Behold, we have arrived in November. Makashamagadai. Rosha Makataya. You cannot miss your miracle. The angels of miracles have been released to help you receive. Every demonic force that was there to stop you, that was there to obstruct that was there to resist the miracles of God in your life. I declare it broken in the name of Jesus. Makasha Magadaya. Rosha Makapo Sekebrin Atai. Makasa Kataya. Whatever is opposing the prophetic word in your life. Marama Kataya. Whatever wants to delay. Whatever wants to postpone. This is the month of miracles. We are not talking about next month. But this is the hour. This is the season of your visitation. Mashana Bagadaya. Roshama Kapo Zekete Rebezandaya. Rema Kapo Zaka Taramayandu. Roshata Rabagadaya. Rama Kasa Katarabazandaya. Roshama Gadaya. Ramakataya. I know that there are those seasonal powers of darkness that come to visit you to stop what the Lord has said, to contend with the prophetic word. In the name of Jesus Christ, I destroy, I destroy, I break. Makaramasana Magadaya, Rosamagadaya, your miracles will not be delayed, your miracles will not be postponed. Your promotion will not be postponed. Your appointment will not be delayed. It is happening now in the name of Jesus. Somebody speak in the spirit. Even those of you who are watching online. 
Marusa Cabo Zagadaya, Bandesa Maca Precatosa, Recabo Zagadaya, Maca Bozanda Rabazanda, Rosa Talabagada, Mareca Bosaca Precata, Maresha Talabagada, Maca Boseke Precata, Maca Mosacata. You cannot be contained, you cannot be stopped. You're finishing 2020 on top. You're finishing 2020 with the testimonies. You're finishing 2020 with a turnaround. Masata Magadaya, Rosa Magadaya, Pakabo Seke Brink Attire, Ramasana. Faith is rising, faith is rising, faith is rising. Marosha Magadaya. There are angels that have been sent to this service to distribute miracles. The Lord has shown me a vision from the book of John chapter 6. The way Jesus gave the disciples bread to distribute and the 5,008 angels have been released. They are distributing miracles. They are distributing answers to prayer. Makabo sakataya magadaya. Ramashanda magadaya. Re makabo sekebrik ataya. Rosha magadaya. What a way to enter November. On the first of November, God sends us angels. Makamosa. They are moving around. They are moving around. Even those of you who are online. Makosakataya. The disciples distributed the bread to the 5,000 people that were there. And everybody received. Everybody is receiving today. Shama Kabo Zagaraya. Rema Kabo Sekebrik Atai. Rosa Magaraya. Rosa Magadiza. Rema Katara Bazana Bagaraya. Rosa Tara Bagaraya. Makosa maka brekatai, baseke brekato zamagadai, marama sana magadai. You're receiving your healing. You're receiving your deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive your healing, marosha magada. Receive your deliverance. Receive the open doors, as the Lord told us in seven months, which is ending in February. Open doors. There are doors that are unlocking today in the name of Jesus. Makabo Zagaraya. Rosata Ramayanda Ramayandos. Makabo Seke Brigatai. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Just welcome the Holy Spirit in your life. Shama <laughs> Desperate for your presence. Oh, and I, and I, I, I'm lost hey. without you. I'm lost without you. And I, and I. For you, I'm desperate for you. Oh, and I, and I, I, I'm lost without you. 
Just come. Shamagada. You gentlemen also behind there. You. Yes. Shamagada. Roshara Bagada. Rasha. No, I was I was meaning the other one. Where is he? This one. Roshatara Bagada. Roshatara Bagada 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 Bagada. Thank you, Lord. Listen. What's your name? Huh? Phil. Ocheng. Yeah. Ocheng. The Lord is telling me to tell you so much, so much, so much, so much, so much, so much has been stolen away from you. And uh, even when there appeared to be like there is a shift in your life, the same battles that you had somewhere seem to be coming back in your life. But the Lord is telling me that his power is coming upon your life. Uh, I mean, you have always found yourself in atmospheres where people just conspire, conspire against you, and the enemy just steals. Is that true? But the Lord is telling you this is the season for the miracles that have delayed in your life. <laughs> the word of God is sure. It will not drop on the ground. So Lord, I pray for a change in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And uh, Whatever the canker worms and the locusts and the palmer worms have stolen from this man, I speak a restoration in the name of Jesus, both in the city and in the countryside. Listen, I don't know what you're doing in the village, but the Lord is saying that even in the village, He's turning things around for you and He's going to bless you. This time you're not missing it. Mashanda Bakataya, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Brother, I see you have been climbing a mountain. It's like you've been going upstream. Climbing a mountain speaks about a difficult, challenging journey that you have been taking. 
But I see like you are taking the final three steps to come to the summit of that mountain. So, the Lord is saying this. That which looked really so hard and that which looked so challenging and at times it was like it broke you down. In the eyes of the people, you try to present yourself like you're very strong, everything is all right. But there are things that you've been going through which have been very difficult for you as a person. The Lord is saying he is now giving you capacity. You know, you are not actually walking. You are leaping to the summit. And things are going to change for good in this month and in this season. So, Lord, I pray. Where is your wife? Just join your hands together. In the name of Jesus, I bless this couple. Makasha Kabagadai. I break the power of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, that no power, no darkness, no conspiracy shall even prevail against your marriage. Your marriage is standing on the rock. No storm is going to shake your marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Lord is releasing peace amongst your lives in Jesus mighty name the days that are coming from now are great days Holy Spirit release your presence the release the power of God Jesus' name. Sister, it is well, okay? The storms are coming to an end. Yeah. The Lord has visited your house today. God bless you. Okay. Let's take our seats. Thank you, worship team. God bless you. Yeah, we welcome everybody for our second service. I'm continuing to share with us. This microphone is still not convincing me at all. I am continuing to share with us on what I began to share last Sunday. Hindrances to miracles. And because my time is gone, I want to go through a few things uh, very quickly. Last Sunday we said that uh, miracles are God's bread for his children. Miracle is a supernatural intervention. And if you are born again, Jesus Christ made it so clear that miracles are supposed to be the order of the day in your life. Miracles are not supposed to take place once in a while, you know? And the Lord gave us a prophetic word, and he said that this month of November is going to be a month of miracles. When the Lord gives us a prophetic word, our work is to receive it. Are we together? And walk in that prophetic word. Activate it. Declare it every day of your life uh, so that you can see it. Because 
child of God, I want you to remember that we are in a battle. And the battle we are in is a battle of faith. Jesus Christ said in the book of St. Luke chapter 18, when the Son of Man comes back on earth, shall he find faith? Faith is a battle. Don't think that you are going to receive the miracles of God casually. You have to contend for those promises. You know? Okay. So, uh, we looked at um, unbelief being one of the, the reasons why miracles, uh, you know. And um, let's get to something else here. Um, okay. Moving by feeling. Can hinder, not can. It will hinder miracles in your life. Let's um, go to the word of God. Numbers chapter 13, verse 27 to 33. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be, not, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So we were in their sight. When we talk about living a life of feeling, we are talking about a life that follows the five senses. You know? The senses that operate in the natural realm. The sense of touch, the sense of taste, the sense of sight, the sense of hearing, what you hear with your natural eyes and what you see with your natural eyes, that is a life which is a natural life. Because, child of God, uh, feelings... Uh, please, organize to give me the other microphone. This microphone is taking me nowhere. Feelings operate in the realm of the soul. They don't operate in the realm of the spirit. You know? So, every time, and, and God has called us to operate in the supernatural realm, not in the natural realm. So, every time you want to move by what you see and by what you feel, then you are going to close the miraculous atmosphere from uh, coming to you. You're not going to see miracles in your life. And uh, we see this very well. You can turn off this one. Hope it's okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we back? Okay. Better. Yeah. So, we see this in the book of Numbers where we've read. You know, God brought the children of Israel to the verge of the promised land. And then Moses uh, sends the 12 spies, 
<laughs> to go and check out the land. And they went there, they checked out the land, and only two of them were able to see God in that land. The, the, the rest of the ten, what they saw there, they saw the challenges of the promised land. They saw the Anakites, they saw the Hittites, the Canaanites, and, uh, you know, they themselves declared and they said that it, the people that we saw in those nations were giants, and when we stood before them, actually, we were in our own eyes like grasshoppers. That is a life of sight. You know, you look at the city of Nairobi and you look at the challenges that you are facing and you feel, oh my goodness, it is time for me to pack my bags and leave the city because things are not working out. And listen, the sad story about this kind of report, and this is why Joshua, Joshua was smart. After he saw what happened with the 12, at uh, the 10, for him, what he decided to do, he never sent out 12 spies. He sent two. <laughs> because he knew numbers have a problem. You know, you remember when he sent the spies to go to Jericho, to check out on Jericho. He could not send 10 because he knew when you have so many people, you're going to have a trouble. That's why you cannot depend on the majority opinion. The majority opinion can always be wrong. But when you stand with God, the opinion is right. Now, listen at the, the sad thing about that story. Let me read for you Joshua chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. I mean, this is so touching. The Bible says, And she said unto the men, that is Rahab, I know that the Lord has given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did unto the two kings of, of the Amorites that were on the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Oj, whom you utterly destroyed, and as soon as we had these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is a God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Child of God, listen. The moment the nation of Israel crossed the Red Sea, when God parted that Red Sea and they crossed the message traveled and arrived in the promised land that the God of Israel, you people, we are finished. We are finished. Because who has ever heard that a Red Sea can part by itself? That is what happened to the children of Israel. And the men in Jericho, because remember, Jericho was the most powerful city at that time. It had never been destroyed. It had never been broken because of the powerful walls and the level of demonic sacrifice that had been done in Jericho. Because Jericho, how was Jericho constructed? Jericho was constructed through the sacrifice of babies. They gave babies as a sacrifice to Molech, you know. Uh, there's so much about that I don't want to get into. But it had so much demonic power that you could not penetrate Jericho. But the people in Jericho were already beaten even before Israel stepped into the land. Child of God, at times it is good to hear what demons are saying about you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, many times we are, we are talking about what the devil has done. The devil has done this. The devil has done this. But listen, demons are also discussing in the, in the kingdom of darkness of what havoc you have done over them. 
And certain demons, you have worked them so much that they can never come back to you. Every time Satan sends them, they say, I can't go back there. I was worked proper. What I'm saying is this, child of God. Every miracle that happens in your life, the report does not only go to heaven, but the report also goes to the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness has a record of the miracles that God has done in your life. And because of what God has done in your life in the past, it makes the forces of darkness to be shaken. Listen, the children of Israel, it is so, it is so unfortunate that they missed out on that opportunity. Because I can tell you, if they had not gone around and around and around and around for 40 years in the wilderness, the moment they crossed the Red Sea, they would have marched into the promised land and there would be no opposition. They would just have taken the land because the people in the promised land were already shaken and totally paralyzed because of the miracle that God had done among us, the children of Israel. But you know what happened? That's why, child of God, let me tell you, this is a mystery, it is a secret when God does the first miracle in your life, it means you have entered an atmosphere where the next miracles are easier to get. Listen, your first car was the hardest to buy. But after you buy the first car, you now enter a realm where you can easily get other cars. The first miracle is always the challenge. But after you get that, the other miracles just follow so easily. And that's why I want to declare, let that first miracle happen in your life. Praise the Lord. You know, the, the children of Israel would have taken advantage of momentum. And this is why we should never be satisfied because God has done one miracle in our lives. When God does one miracle, let that encourage you to pursue him more for other miracles to take place in your life. But what I'm saying is this child of God. The life of feeling. How do I feel like? You know? When you walk by sight, the Bible makes it so clear that the, 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 the just shall live by faith. We don't live by sight. When you walk by sight, you are operating in the natural laws. And the moment you operate in the natural laws, you cannot be able to overcome the devil because the devil is the expert of the natural laws. He is the expert of feelings. He is the God of this world. You need to become like an ego. When an ego attacks its prey, whether it is a snake, an ego does not kill a snake from the ground. The ego carries the snake and it takes it into a familiar atmosphere where the snake cannot be able to fight. Because it is used to fighting on the, on the ground. Child of God, we cannot fight against the devil using natural laws. He's so smart for us for that. We have to take the devil in the realm of faith. When you enter in the realm of faith, the forces of darkness cannot prevail over your life. Are we together? Child of God, listen. You know, uh, before I began to mature in the things of God, it has been a learning journey for me. At times, I walked by, by feelings. Even I preached by feelings and, uh, 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 because I wanted to you know, sense that the presence of God is moving. The presence of God is moving. Of course, there are those times when God manifests his presence. There are times when you go in prayer and you'll have those showers of fire. 
You'll have the showers of power and the anointing going through you. You, you experience those sensations which are like electric shocks going through your body. There is a place for that. But listen to me, child of God, it does not mean that when you go in prayer and you pray and you don't feel anything completely, there is a quietness. It doesn't mean that God was not there. God is there whether you feel him, whether you don't feel him. It is just that he's not manifesting himself. And you've got to learn. At times, I, I came out of the presence of God and I was greatly disappointed. And I said, oh Lord, God had to take me on a journey. I had to go through, I've gone through seasons where you go and seek the Lord. There is no vision. There is no dream. There is no rhema word. There is no sensation. But it doesn't mean that God is not there. You know? I remember, I think two years ago, I was preaching in, um, in Perth, Australia. And uh, this is one of the hardest services. Wow, I ever preached. You know, I, I was preaching and people were looking at me. You know, when people look at you like they want to stone you. You know, I, I tried to, you know, to, to speak in tongues, they were not praying. I tried to crack some jokes, they were very serious. I said, wow, Lord, what, what am I going to do? Anyway, I said, okay, le le let's go the way it is. It appeared to me it was so dry. finished the service, I prayed for people, just very simple prayers. And then, after that, I'm there talking with the pastor, and in my heart, I'm wondering, wow, what happened? What, where did the presence of God go? Then, a lady comes to me, and she's having a belt. She has untied herself, and she says, what a powerful service. I have never experienced this kind of power. I said, what are you talking about? Are you trying to, I mean, so I, I, at first I felt, you know, then she went on to describe, pastor, when you are preaching, the power of God came upon me. I've been using this belt. I've been sick for so many years. I could not stand without it. And the power came upon me, went through me, and I felt totally healed. I decided to go to the bathroom to check myself as he was still preaching, and tied myself, and my back was perfect. This is the most. <laughs> People of God, you know, uh, let me talk to the preachers here. Praise the Lord. It's not what you're feeling. Will they just live by faith? The realm of faith does not operate by how you feel. Are we together? Whether you feel him, whether you don't feel him, God is there. And God wants to train you not to be affected by the environment where you are. Because many of us, we get affected by what we see. And that's the reason why at times, God will withdraw his manifested presence from your life. Not that you've done anything wrong, but he wants to teach you to walk by faith. Another time, I was fasting for 21 days. My goodness, the first day I was so hungry. I was hungry. <laughs> the second day, I was too hungry. In fact, I was walking uh, on, uh, not Moy Avenue, which, which street is this? Tom Boyer Street. And uh, I knocked a pole, I fell down, you know. I, I, then I, I blacked out, I could not even see. Then I, so I stood at the side of the wall and anyway, regained my consciousness. Then I walked, I went to the office, I made up my mind, I'm breaking this fast. This fast is not in God. I'm not feeling anything. I went back home. I told my wife, no, this fast, I am breaking it today. Make for me food. You know, my wife is wise. So she told me, oh my dear, you know, it is a bit late. Why don't you just sleep? I'll make for you in the morning. I said, make something, please. She would say, no, let's, I'll make in the morning the food you love so much. I said, okay. I went to bed. 
when I woke up in the morning, I had power to fast. And that fast brought so many blessings. Are we together? So, child of God, uh, to walk by feeling is, look at Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, Paul was going through so much. And, you know, you say that the life he was, he was living was not a life of feelings. But it is a life of faith. Okay, let's move to something different. Using the wrong keys to get the right answers can stop miracles from taking place in your life. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13. And now abide the faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Now, the scripture here is talking about three powerful keys. Child of God, in the natural realm, we have keys. The keys that open my house cannot open your house. Even if you try to bring your keys and fix them inside my door, the door is not going to open. And uh, in the mastery, uh, I've been sharing with us on the mastery of the spiritual realm, we need to understand what key do I need to, uh, to, to use in this particular situation in order for me to get a breakthrough. You know, certain things can be unlocked by prayer, other things that you will need to add on fasting, other things you will not even need to pray, you will not even need to fast, you just need to sow a seed. Other things you may just need to stay in the presence of God and meditate. Other things you may just need to serve the Lord. I mean, different keys unlock different things. And that's the way we unlock the realm of the spirit. Every particular truth that you know and that you live in and that you move in unlocks a particular spiritual realm. Now, the Bible tells us here that at now remaineth faith Love and hope, but the greatest of these is love or charity. It doesn't mean that hope and faith are not important. But what he's trying to say, all these are different keys that have their place. For example, the key of hope is too powerful. Brothers and sisters, you and me have gone through incredible battles. There's nobody here who has not gone through challenges. You know, I was, I was listening to, to Pastor Shindu. I mean, he, he was telling me some of the things that he went through. I mean, I, I, they made me to laugh. You know, uh, when he, he proposed to his wife, uh, Pastor Terry, that he wants to marry, you know, and uh, Pastor Terry talked to the father and the father said, okay, let him send an application. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And in that application, he must attach the photos when he was a young child. We want to see. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was, I've never heard of anything like that. Hallelujah. He had to write an application, not with a typewriter, with his own handwriting. You know? And he attaches the photos. Glory to God for him. At least he came from a background where he took some photos. You know, when he was young. Not his current photos, but... <laughs> Hallelujah. And he had to post it. And poor man, he didn't have money. He had to post it to the U.S. Because... <laughs> Put it in DHL to the U.S. Glory to God. Yeah. And I know all of us here, everybody has a share of their battles. 
There are people, you've gone without food, you've gone without transport, you've been despised by your family members and realize everybody has gone through something. Am I talking to somebody? Are there people who have not gone through anything for you just say everything for me has been okay? No. But, child of God, what has kept you going? <clears throat> what has kept you going? It is the spiritual truth of hope. We keep on going. We refuse to compromise. We do not give up because we know that tomorrow is going to be better than today. Are we together? And, and child of God, let me tell you, no, no matter what you're facing, every problem has an expiry date. Every, when manufacturers make products, they always write the expiry date of that product. Every challenge that you're facing has an expiry date. And I want to declare, some of them are expiring this day. Can I hear better? Amen. I'm saying, certain battles are expiring today. The Egyptians that you see, you shall never see them again in the mighty name of Jesus. Because what has a genesis has an end. You are not going to live in that situation forever. Job said, behold, a, 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 a what? Uh, a, 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 Job made a statement and he said that there is a hope for a tree. Even if it has been cut. By virtue, by the scent of the water in the roots. And that water is the anointing. As your spirit smells the anointing, this afternoon, you shall make a comeback. Are we together? There is hope for a tree. You are far much more than a tree. Are we together? Your situation is not a permanent situation. That's why never make permanent decisions based on temporary challenges. Mm. Never make permanent decisions based on temporary challenges. You decide to marry somebody because you can't pay rent. And the person has a house. Okay? Finally, the day comes when you can pay rent. But you made a permanent? Because marriage has no what? <clears throat> Begin to say she's not treating me with respect. But you made a decision. Hope. People of God, without hope, I would have given up. You would have given up. <laughs> Everybody here has a hope to buy a house. Every sister here has a hope for their wedding. Everybody here, every man, every preacher here has hope that God is going to use them. Everybody, it is hope that pushes us. Child of God, hope is very, very powerful. That's why when you're feeling so discouraged, go to the prophetic words. Glory to God. You know, I, I was going through some of the prophetic words and uh, I remember this prophetic word, I'd even forgotten about it, but it's so applicable now. Cindy Jacobs gave a prophetic word when she came last year and she said, God is on a shopping mission. He's shopping for you the land. So I said, wow. God has been shopping and finally he has gotten the land. Praise the Lord. So we have to pray for that prophetic word to become a reality. But listen, much as hope is a very powerful key, hope only speaks about the future. If you remain in hope, 
you will never see miracles taking place in your life. Because every day you are hoping. I'm hoping things are going to be better. I'm hoping tomorrow will be better than today. That is the realm of the future. Now, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8 that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, many people in the church don't have a problem with the God of yesterday. We believe in the miracles that he did in the past. You know? And you also believe the miracles that God did for you last year. We don't have a problem with that. And there's even no argument about that. We don't have a problem with believing the God of the future. We don't have a problem. You know, uh, that, that's why when you prophesy upon people and tell them, the Lord is coming for you, he's going to do this and he's going to do this and he's going to do this, nobody's going to argue about that because it is all about the future. But many of us, we have a problem with believing the God of today. And yet, the Bible speaks about three dimensions. Yesterday, today, and forever. To tap into forever, I don't need faith, I need hope. But to see miracles today, I don't need hope, I need faith. Are we together? Because... The Bible makes it so clear in Hebrews chapter 11. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things that are not seen. Faith is operating in the now realm. Are we together? Child of God, I want you to shift your mind. I want you to touch your head. Even those of you who are watching online, I want you to touch your head and shift your mind. Speak to yourself and say, it's not about tomorrow, but it is now because I'm in the realm of faith. Are we together? Prophesy to yourself and say, miracles now. Come on, miracles now. Breakthroughs now. Supernatural visitation now. Hallelujah. People of God, today I am not prophesying and saying it shall come to pass. No, 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 no. It is coming to pass. The prophetic words, this is the month of miracles. Shout in and say, this is my month of miracles. Come on, I don't hear you. You need to create it. Declare, say, this is my month of miracles. And it is happening now. It is happening today. Now, now. I mean, there's nothing beautiful like when miracles happen now. You know, like what happened to Pastor Jen of Nyeri. When, and listen, when I went to pray for her, she was barren for about seven years without having a child. And I preached to the men. And then we went to the office. This is why you cannot walk by feeling. And then she and the husband brought an envelope with a lot of money and they told me come on we've been believing God for a baby please pray for us people of God there was no manifested presence in that room you know there's a time as a preacher you're used to the presence of God yeah? you feel the electric shocks and you know wow something is there yes God can at times move like that but child of God I want you to know that miracles that were done in the Bible, Jesus Christ never repeated the same miracle the same way. He prayed for people differently. He meets a man in the book of John chapter 9 
He gets soil, spits on it, places the eyes there and says, go to the pool of Siloam. But when he meets with Bartimaeus, what can I do for you? I want to see. See! Miracles are done differently. The Lord is going to visit you differently. The Lord is coming from a direction that you do not know. He's coming from, son of God, get ready for something that you've not seen in your life. Get out of the familiar, what you are used to. You're looking at the contacts in your telephone and you're thinking God is going to come through this way, through that way. No, 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 no. There's another way. Listen. We prayed a very simple prayer not lasting more than a minute. And you know what? That same night she conceived. You, most of you have seen that baby. That, not, not the next day. That, that was the now realm. Oh my goodness. People online, it is now. Your healing is now. The doors are opening now. By the time I finish to share, you're going to have a message on your phone telling you there is a tender. There is an open door. Government doesn't work on Sunday. But somebody in government is going to send you a message. That's faith. Now, the reason why many people don't get healed when they come for prayer, they are hoping to get healed. They are hoping to get pregnant. You don't hope to get pregnant. After you are prayed for, go and get pregnant. Go and carry out the necessary transactions. The people on that side are very quiet. <laughs> are we together? Let me finish with this scripture. Time is gone. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it is not tomorrow. It is now. The doors are opening now. Your healing is now. Your miracles are now. Now. I love it. I went to I went to, to Miracle Center in Kampala and uh, the now realm is so sweet. I had money, and the Lord spoke to me to sow an amount of money, you know, to the man of God. I got the money, I took it. I saw it did so happily. I came back to the congregation. The meeting went on, the meeting went on, the meeting went on. And you know, this is a meeting that has thousands of people. Then the man of God uh, says, people need to plant, I don't know which kind of seed, I don't remember. You know, I didn't even plant because I'd given all my money. And people bring a lot of money. Then he goes on to preach, he goes on to preach, he goes on to preach. And then he calls me to the front. And he says, the Holy Spirit has told me to give you this money. I said, wow, I have just planted and what I got, I cannot disclose it for security reasons. <laughs> but it was good money because there were thousands of people. And you know, the power of God was moving. And people were bringing money. People of God, the days of you waiting for prophets for a long time, this, that's not where we are today. Is the Lord... Mark chapter 11. 
Verse 23. For verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, hmm? what Jesus is saying, beyond reasonable doubt, don't, uh, don't doubt. You know, this is God speaking. And look at the words he's using. Verily, I assure you, you know, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. That is faith. You know, faith is, I believe right now it has been done. And now I receive. Faith is not, I see then I believe. Somebody said, the eyes of an African, not the eyes of an African, the what of an African. We have that saying in my, where we, we say that seeing is believing. If I don't see, I can't believe. Some of us, want to see, if I can see it, I don't need to believe. It is there, it is there. But I believe that I'm healed and then I walk into the healing. So, you didn't come here, you're living here with your miracle. Because that's what the Lord is telling us. Just open your mouth and speak in the Spirit. Roshaka basaka brakatai. Roshata rabazanda rabazanda rabayandos. Maka bosaka brakata rabazanda. It's got nothing with what you feel. Maka zamagadai. Roshama declare. Create the now atmosphere. Ramashana, it is not about the future. It is about now. Lord, I believe today is the day of my visitation. I believe today is the day of a shift at my place of work. Makosa, it is the day of my healing. Ramashana bakata rabazanda bagaraya. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Marama, let's stand up on our feet. Roshata rabazanda rabagadaya. Maka poseke brekata rabazanda rabayandos. Maresha tarabazanda kata. Rosa makata rabazanda rabagadai. Maka poseke brekata rabazanda rabagadai. Marama shanda bagadai. Worship team come over. Rosa makabra katai. Roshama Gadaya. Makabo Seke Brigatoza. If you came for this service and you're sick, you can make your way to the front. Ramashanda Bagada. We had God heal people in the first service. He's gonna heal you also. Marosha Kabra Gando Zamagadaya. If you're afflicted in your body, Marosha Kabra Kanto Zamagadaya. Marosanda Rabagadaya. Bakabo Seke Brigataya. Rosara Magarai Mare City Rivers and Derby Rosara Mayanda Ramayandi Basakataya. There's that song, Swahili song, Bonde Imani. Let me have all the business people come to the front.
want to declare miracles over your life. challenging year for every business on planet earth. And many of you things have been hard. Some of you of course God has visited you. You've experienced miracles. But this evening, this afternoon I'm praying for you as the Lord is telling us about a season of miracles. Let there be a total shift and a total breakthrough. Let the Lord open unusual doors.
doors beginning today financial harvest that you, that you should have received from January and you didn't receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. So Lord, I pray for your people, for the business people that are here. Makosaka Ramazanda your word shall not return back to you void but shall fulfill what you have assigned it for some businesses were to close but I declare no business is closing in the mighty name of Jesus I speak a turnaround in November to remember Makosaka Bragaraya I release miracles of multiplication miracles of open doors Miracles happening suddenly. Every person that has your money, I command them right now, by reason of the anointing of the Holy Ghost, to pay you, to write that check. They will not sleep. They are troubled until they write that check. And it will not be a bouncing check. It is going through in the mighty name of Jesus. Manda shama kapo seke brekataya. Rama shana bagadaya ropo seke brekataya. Ma kapo seke brekatoza. Rama shana bagadaya. May your stock run. May people run to buy your stock. I speak to your stock. It shall not stay. You are going to have a good problem of where to get stock. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because the Lord has released, he has released your customers in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand clap. It is done. Now, those people were here and you don't have a job. And even if you're online, you're also connecting on that. You don't have a job. I want you to run over here. Uh, very quickly, uh, if there is anybody, you know, so that we can release that in your life, in Jesus' name. The world is looking at next year. For us, the Lord is beginning. Is that your CV? Huh? Huh? It's your CV. Now listen, some of you, God is not going to give you a job. The Holy Spirit is telling him he's going to give you an idea of what you should do. Be sensitive to what he's speaking to you. And the moment he gives you that idea, pursue it. Because he's also going to give you the provision to do that idea. Some of you, God is opening the doors for the jobs. But others, it is going to be like that. Mashana Bagarai. Lift up your hands. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, you are the God of open doors. This is a season of miracles. And I just declare that supernatural visitation. Yes, nations have been shaken. Things have gone down. But it is time for the righteous to prosper and to blossom. So I release that grace of open doors. Makasha kapa kose kebre gadai, makara mazanda rabasanda rabagadai, rosha makabo zeke bregadoza, rema seke bregatoza bagadai, rama that beginning now, opportunities have opened for your people in the name of Jesus, and I place them into your hands. Makasha kabre gadai. And use your openings and use your test testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I also pray for the people who are online. I release those opportunities. Receive them today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You've had a lot of battles with Job. You know? Father Lord, 
in Jesus' name, I break that demonic key that had closed your daughter out of the realm of working. This is the time for her to work. And so, today, I release that appointment into her hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. It's done. It's done by faith. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Okay, let's take our seats. Uh, you know, today we are having uh, a, a recording. Eugenia is going to do her recording right now, which will go for only five minutes. It's, it's going to take place for only five, is it five minutes? Six minutes. Amen? Why don't we celebrate that? that okay, let's get our, our, our offerings and let's give to the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 to 25, there are is that scatter it and yet increase it. And there are is that withhold it more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. I was telling people in the first service <clears throat> that with the holding is not a passport to prosper. One of the wisest men, Solomon, observed that. There is he that withholds and yet he does not multiply. I went to the Maasai Mara about two weeks ago and I was amazed. Uh, a friend of ours, you know, Pastor Munga took us there. We had a wonderful time. But you know when we were going to the Maasai Mara, we saw many gazelles and many wild beasts. They were countless in number. We only saw one lion and we did not see any rhino. We saw gazelles, wild beasts. We saw also so many uh, buffaloes. But listen, child of God, lions are not eaten. No animal eats a lion in Masai Mara because it's the king of the jungle. The rhino is so powerful, difficult to eat it. It will fight you back. The gazelle is always eaten. In fact, in Masai Mara, they call it the, they call it what? The gazelle is, uh, is what? It's breakfast for the lion. It is appetizer. But the more they eat the gazelles, the more they multiply. The lions which are not eaten are few. Wild beasts are eaten. There are too many. There is a lesson to learn there. The more you give yourself, the more you multiply. Rhinos it is a miracle to see a rhino. And yet they are not eaten. Nobody can play around with them apart from these poachers. When we give, there is multiplication. There is increase in giving. When we hold on, we don't increase and we don't multiply. Let's get our offerings and let's bring to the Lord. Those of you who have brought your tithe, please bring. Come to the front. And those of you who are online, the numbers are there, the account details are there. Please, as the Lord moves you, give, and you will be greatly blessed. 
We are sowing into the kingdom of God. Lift up your tithe and let's declare the tithe and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing me. I will never lack and I will never be in debt. I bring my tithe to you, King Jesus. Look upon me from thy holy habitation where you dwell in heaven and bless me. Devil, you have no power over my finances because I'm a tither. I now command the windows of heaven to open over my life and release a blessing that I'll have nowhere to put it but to give to the kingdom, to the poor, to the orphans, and to the widows. In Jesus' name. Give your tithe and um, let us get our offerings and let us bring to the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Worship team, you can give us a song. Let's have the people on the right, please. You can bring the people on the left. You can bring the people in the middle. You can wait. You're the God of miracles, signs and wonders. We believe in your power. We believe in your power. You're the God of Signs and wonders, we believe in your power. We believe in your power. You are your God. Signs and wonders, we believe in your power. You are your God. Jesus, I break every power of darkness. I rebuke every spirit from the gates of hell. Bondages against your life and all witchcraft and all affliction and oppression. I break it. And I break every chain, every chain, every chain of darkness. Over your life, a break. In the mighty name of Jesus, I set you free from all cycles of pain, cycles of affliction, cycles of bondage, chains of darkness, chains of witchcraft. Loose his life in Jesus' name. Yes. Mashaka Bozagaraya. Father Lord, in Jesus' name, I take authority 
over every serpent, every serpent from the gates of hell against your life. Makashamagada, Rosaka, the powers that have been visiting you through dreams, through visions at night and afflicting you. I break! Witchcraft, I command you out! Loose! And loose the fire of the Holy Ghost from the crown of your head. Can you touch your stomach? Touch your stomach. Touch your stomach. Right? Now, devil, remove everything. Out! I release the anointing to break every chain, to break every affliction. Makosakata, the spirit of misery, Roshamagadaya. Makosaka, spiritual slavery, and the prison gets where the devil has blessed you. I break those prisons. Mashaka Ramagadai, break the prison gates in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for the offerings that have been given by your people. Bless them, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Increase your people. Multiply your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand clap. Hey. People of God, prayer continues every Saturday. and. Uh